The disappearance of a Sunday school teacher gripped the New Mexico town of Farmington. On January 18th, 27-year-old Sasha Krause left dinner with friends to pick up some books and wasn't seen again. Those in her Mennonite community feared the worst. And it's with a heavy heart that I now report that the body of Sasha Krause has been identified and located. In late February, a camper happened upon Krause's body in a forest area near Flagstaff, Arizona. A bullet lodged in her skull and her limbs bound with duct tape. The search for who murdered the beloved teacher and why it happened intensified. It would be Krause's cell phone that helped point authorities to a suspect. Over the last few months, San Juan County has lived in fear, not knowing if we had a predator living inside of our community or somebody that was preying upon it. I can assure you we have our man. On April 21st, 94 days after Krause went missing, police arrested 21-year-old Mark Gooch on charges of first-degree murder, kidnapping and theft. Gooch, an Air Force airman, pleaded not guilty. The distance between his home on the Luke Air Force Base in Arizona and Krause's home in New Mexico totals 400 miles. In this case, it, it was something kind of unique in, in that they, they, they knew what her cell phone number was and they tracked the towers that her cell phone had been to. Phoenix criminal defense attorney Dwayne Cates, not affiliated with this case, calls the state's evidence compelling. And then they looked at all the other phones that had connected to those towers and there was only one phone that connected to all the same towers at the same time which means that the two cell phones most likely were together and it was the defendants in this case then another break in the case the san juan sheriff's office in new mexico announced a second arrest sam gooch the brother of mark who according to officials planned to help his brother hide the rifle murder weapon I think they would willingly sacrifice his conviction or put him on probation in exchange for him testifying against his brother. The question is, will he be willing to testify against his brother? Text messages between Mark and Sam suggest a disdain for the Mennonite faith. According to the Associated Press, Mark grew up in the faith and investigators believe he targeted Krauss, not because they knew each other, but out of hate. If they can establish a motive in this case, I mean, it's extremely powerful when you can show that there's been some rumors that he has something against the Mennonite church. He's, you know, he's, he's, you know, he's not happy with the church and, you know, and this, maybe this was his way of getting back at it. But again, until they, until they can clearly establish a motive, you got to kind of be careful of going down a road that doesn't get you where you want to go. And Julie, right now, those two brothers still behind bars, and they will have those uh, status hearings that are continuing to come. But we don't know exactly how fast this case is going to move because there are those COVID-19 exceptions and restrictions, and they've been doing a lot of things over video conference like we've seen across the country. So that is the latest right now. But at this point, that community are uh, very much happy that there has been an arrest made in this case. Uh, certainly. And I mean, just the one thing that struck me other than the, how just um, terribly sad this case is, is the sheriff's confidence. Julia, how confident he is that they have the right people in this. Uh, tell us more, please. The sheriff there in New Mexico, he really has been walking the community through this with social media posts and letting them know that they were continuing the search and putting out those missing flyers. And then that update. Now you heard from the attorney, the very experienced criminal defense attorney that we talked to, Dwayne Cates. And though he says the prosecution's case is very strong in this uh, matter, he did take a little bit of an issue with the way that the sheriff made those bold statements. And here's that full clip. Take a listen. I'm pleased to announce that on April 21st, representatives of the Coconino County Sheriff's Office, San Juan County Sheriff's Office, and our federal partners executed search warrants and an arrest warrant on Mark Gooch of Phoenix, Arizona. Over the last few months, San Juan County has lived in fear, not knowing if we had a predator living inside of our community or somebody that was preying upon it. I can assure you we have our man. Now, we're going to be given more details as to the specifics of this case in the future. But in the meantime, I just want to assure you of my confidence that we have the right person responsible for this horrendous crime. Now, in the next few months, you'll see the San Juan County Sheriff's Office and Coconino County Sheriff's Office continue to work together to make sure that Sasha and the Krauss family receive the justice they deserve. 
The Sheriff of Coconino County and I are committed to making sure that Mark Gooch receives a max sentence for these horrible crimes. And yes, Arizona still has the death penalty. Julie, they're not uncommon for sheriff's offices to be confident about the suspect, but to be talking about the punishment and that they will make sure that that punishment comes about is an interesting stance from this official. Oh, most definitely. And uh, to take a look together now at the opposite side, you mentioned attorney Dwayne Cates, um, certainly going to attack the evidence that the prosecution has gathered, what they've been discussing. Tell us about how the ballistics are going to factor in. I understand he spoke to that. And what does the state have in the way of that kind of evidence? To clarify, Julie, Dwayne Cates not affiliated with this case. He is one of our experts that we uh, did have look at this case and go over things. So he's looking at this from his experience as a criminal defense attorney there in Arizona where this case is going to be handled. But he said, in this case, the prosecution has a bullet, that the bullet that was lodged inside the head of Sasha Krause. And it is something that they've already gotten the results back on and they have released that to the public, that the bullet, it matches the rifle that was in the possession of the suspect, Mark Gooch. It's also one that they say was about to be hidden by his brother. That's why his brother is facing those charges for agreeing to come and help his brother hide that rifle. But that ballistics evidence, is, Attorney Kate says, really won't be enough, that there is more that the defense uh, can attack if they don't have more than that, if the prosecution doesn't. Here's what he had to say. Well, the prosecutor right now, you know, absent anything else, has a pretty good case. I mean, you know, the ballistics, uh, the ballistics from the rifle, the, the, the bullet found in the uh, in the victim's head, you know, they came back ballistically to the rifle. Now, ballistics has lost some of its luster, and and in some circles is even kind of starting to be considered like junk science because there's a lot of subjective interpretation when looking at a bullet and the gun it came from and the markings that it leaves and, and all that. I don't know if you're you're not from around here, but there was the there was the I-10 shooter. Somebody was shooting motorists on I-10, and they made an arrest based on ballistics that was from a gun. But after some retesting, they had to dismiss the charges because it turned out it wasn't that gun after all, after further testing. So, so you know, the, the thing in this case is going to be the DNA. From what I understand, they have some DNA from under the fingernails of the victim. You know, and if it's the defendant's uh, DNA under her fingernails, then the state has a, a, a really good case. And that would be the hardest thing for the uh, defense to dispute. Really tough details in this case. And Julie, like he said, that fingernail evidence, the, the DNA that was found under the victim's fingernails has not been released yet. So we don't know if those results are in. But as far as what's been released to the public, that may still be processed or in the process of them getting those results. So that may be a huge thing for either the defense or the prosecution, depending on what happens. But the key thing that they have, along with that bullet, is this cell phone evidence, the cell phone towers that show that both Sasha Krause and Mark Gooch were in the same area at the same time. And they were the only two phones that were hitting those same towers at the same time. They've also got some statements from the brother before he was arrested saying that his brother did have some issues with the Mennonite faith, that they had left the church back in 2015. So a lot of information that you know those prosecutors are piecing together to put the strongest case together that they can to find justice for this family. Oh, certainly, Julia. You know, speaking of that, one last question before we let you go, please. In terms of a motive, if uh, that beautiful, young, beloved school teacher was targeted because of her religion, uh, could there potentially be a hate crime? Is one on the books in Arizona, number one? And then number two, could we see this case become a death penalty case? Do they have capital punishment there? These are two unknowns as far as what we know from prosecutors. They have not filed this as either of those, a death penalty case or a hate crime, but those are statutes in Arizona. There is a hate crime statute, and race, religion is one of those factors that could enhance this if they are able to prove that he was doing this out of some kind of motivation and hate against her faith. And as far as the death penalty, it is still on the books there in Arizona, lethal injection. It has been 
um, several years that they have been to the Supreme Court over their death penalty, and there was a suspension of time where they did not have a death penalty executions, but it is still there on the books, but nothing that this prosecution has actually filed to say that that's how they intend to pursue this case. This case is certainly one we will be watching.